All right, now it's time to talk some uh, F1. And if you are an F1 fan and also enjoy NASCAR, check out our NASCAR preview of Las Vegas. Uh, that video is also available here on Prime Sports Network. And you can check out both of CJ's fantasy reports for F1 and NASCAR, which will be available later in the week. And uh, Go over to rotowire.com. You can get a link, which we always provide you here, of where you can find it weekly at rotowire.com. Uh, if you want to wait for when we post the videos later in the week, you could do that as well. All right, so uh, let's uh, take a look. It's been a while, but here are the futures, the updated futures. And th they're the same as we left off with Max Verstappen at just minus 165. So there you go. I got a good parlay for everybody. How about this? If you don't want to put on, if you don't want to invest even just 165, and I get that, even I don't like doing that, but if you don't want to do that, here's, here's a parlay for you. Max Verstappen to win the championship at minus 165, and minus 130, Donald Trump to win the presidency. <laughs> <laughs> How about Great. that? Like a good, good parlay. <laughs> yeah, that should be a good parlay. I'm sorry, but I'm 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 you know I, I I'm I'm a handicapper, and that's that's why I'm it's it's nothing to do with my heart, but you know, I I see what I see, uh. But yeah, that might be a good one. In that direction, just as they've been swinging the direction of McLaren recently in Formula One, though anybody who's been paying attention to us, especially ahead of the Singapore race, I think they've got to be encouraged by the recommendation that we've been giving every single week for the past month or so that max Verstappen, even at negative 165 is still the way to go for the driver's title yeah i mean it's uh i mean we even liked it at 200 and yep. and, and 230 i think it was so yeah and this weekend is a sprint weekend um so the, it is a chance for norris and mclaren to be able to make up some ground on Verstappen's. Uh, and Red Bull's lead. Actually, McLaren leads the Constructors' Championship, but I'm really only talking about the title here. I think the Verstappen still has an unassailable lead. I think mathematically it can still be done, or I know mathematically it can still be done. However, um, as we went to Singapore and as we went to Azerbaijan, if you remember, you know, it's been like two months now, if you remember back to those shows, I was saying, we were saying that those two tracks are by far the worst for Red yep. Bull. Um, but if you look at what Verstappen and uh, Red Bull did at Singapore, yeah, they were 24 seconds behind, but they were the clear second place car. Um, that is one of the best drives we've seen out of Verstappen and Red Bull recently. It was at arguably their worst track. And the five out of these last six races here in the run up to the championship, while there are three sprint races this weekend being one of them, Five out of those six tracks are more the traditional natural terrain road courses with medium to high speed corners, which is where Red Bull and Max Verstappen come to life and can actually, you know, put up a challenge uh, to McLaren and be more close to them as they have been in the past. I think the real question that's going to be answered this weekend, <clears throat> maybe not answered, but a little bit more clear. This is also the last weekend where teams can bring big upgrades. Um, so this is we've had you know, three or four weeks off before we come to this race. There are only six races left to go. All of them are on the Western Hemisphere or in the Middle East. Uh, so it's really tough for teams logistically to bring new cars and new components uh, to any track other than this race. So I think the biggest upgrades you're going to see are this weekend. Uh, Ferrari's got a big upgrade, so I would expect Leclerc and uh, Carlos Sainz to be a little bit more competitive. But I do think the tracks, <clears throat> as well as the lead, the first stop and has just kind of play into his and Red Bull's hands here over the next six races. Now, Max has won the last three races here. Yeah, <laughs> he has. Yes, it's been a dominant track for him. So uh, he started first and second in 2021 and 2022. Last year, he started sixth and still came forward to win. Uh, pretty dominant races from him. But that was, again, also when nobody could really touch him as well. So true. The years where Red Bull and Verstappen were dominating. So I would expect McLaren to still have the legs on him this weekend. So I think it's going to be 
uh, pretty tight between, actually, I think it's going to be, McLaren's going to be the favorite, and I think Norris and Piastri are going to be tough to beat. Uh, but I think from a second place uh, standpoint, it's going to be pretty tight between Red Bull and Ferrari. But I think uh, Verstappen and Red Bull, they figured out what they need with this car. I think we saw signs of it at Singapore, which I said, their worst track, coming to a track where their car has been better this year. Um, the type of track their car has been performing at really well this year. I think they stand to, to gain a little bit more this weekend. Okay, so what's the, uh, what is it, a 52-point lead? So Verstappen at 331, Norris at 279, so that's 52 points. Exactly right. Okay, so it's a 52-point lead. So in theory, what does Max have to do, worst-case scenario? Say, well, let's go over two scenarios. One is overall, and then two starting with this week. So let's say overall first. What does he have to avoid? He has to avoid just finishing outside of the points. If he's able in the sprint races as well as the, the races. So uh, we have six full-blown races, sprint races. You get half the points. So there's a little bit of extra ground there that McLaren can can catch up and, and Norris can catch up. But it, Verstappen hasn't been finishing outside of the points. So he's got to avoid retirements. He's got to avoid crashes. He's got to avoid making some major mistakes, which he has done pretty much all season. So yeah. assuming he finishes inside the points... And, and just continues doing exactly what he's been doing, uh, which should be you know relatively straightforward for them. This this championship is still his to lose. Yeah, because I mean overall, let's see, <clears throat> he hasn't finished worse than sixth. Well, he had one Australia. Was that the one where? Yeah, if we go back to Australia, which was way back in March, he had brake issues qualified on pole but had brake issues and that was dnf so you got to go all the way back to march uh to find what he needs to avoid these last six races other than that he has not finished worse than sixth since then and all year besides that race so that, that is well means- inside points every single time and that's exactly all that's exactly what he needs to do yep. norris even if norris wins even if mclaren keeps on winning they're not going to be gaining enough points to be able to drive that 52 into a negative territory to be able to overtake for stopping. So all Max has to do is finish no worse than sixth in every race the rest of the season, like he's done pretty much no all worse, season, and he's fine. I would say worse than 10th. Yeah. 10th, he's, he's good. Top 10s, yeah. Obviously, Tenth. the high he can get. Uh, sixth is about where, you know, if he has a terrible day but doesn't DNF, sixth is about where he should be finishing, uh, all things considered, because none of the rest of the field is able to really compete with those top three teams. Uh, so sixth would probably be the low point I would expect from him unless some disaster happens. And as long as he keeps doing that, yeah, the championship is his. Okay. Then what's the first thing he needs to really avoid this weekend with all first the extra he- racing points? First thing he needs to avoid this weekend is go in the wrong direction on whatever upgrades they bring. Because if the, so, with this being a sprint weekend, they've been off for a month. Everybody's going to have new bits on their cars. Uh, everybody's going to be a little bit rusty because they've you know been sitting on their couches or going on vacations for the past couple of months. So you're not going to really know where Ferrari is. You're not going to you know McLaren's going to be out front. Ferrari is probably the biggest question in terms of the Red Bull competition. Uh, because they are bringing a, a big upgrade to this track or expected to. Uh, so as long as Red Bull continue on the course that they've been on over the past three or four weeks where they figured out what is ailing the car and they've been improving on it incrementally each week, as long as they continue that trend and they don't take another wrong turn this weekend with whatever upgrades they bring, that's the first thing that he needs to avoid. Uh, and you really, with the sprint race weekend, you really only have one practice on Friday before you start doing the qualifying for Saturday's sprint race. And then by then, everything's got to be locked in. So you've got one session to really be able to figure out whether you're still on the right track or not. As long as they stay on that right track, I think uh, they're going to be in good standing for for Sunday's race as well as Saturday's sprint race. All right. Let's see what we got here. Race winners on the right. So we've got... Interesting they don't have a a winner. Oh, it's on the far right. Yeah, far right, yeah. So Norris is the odds-on favorite. And then we've got Verstappen tied 
Now, is this a, this is a little bit surprised? Is, isn't it a little bit? I know Max hasn't been his best, and I get that. But considering how dominant he's been at this particular track, are you surprised he's uh, co second choice at four fifty? I am not actually. I would okay. have expected him to be a little bit closer to Leclerc, and for a couple of reasons. Number one, Landon Norris, um, he, he's going to be the favorite. He's head and shoulders above where everybody else is so far. Uh, Oscar Piastri, though, he has the same car. So he's in a McLaren and he's proven that he can win. Uh, the question is, McLaren's been letting their drivers race so far this season. If they decide to promote Norris and make him the number one driver and force Piastri to back off and consolidate points around Norris because he's their only hope to get Verstappen, that's probably why Piastri is not closer to Norris this weekend. Uh, but I would expect Verstappen to be a little bit more close to Leclerc and Ferrari because, again, as I said, Ferrari's bringing some big upgrades. Ferrari's been competitive. Uh, this is a different track, though. Um, Ferrari's been more competitive on the street circuits, so maybe um, you know, maybe their upgrades help them. Maybe they don't. Bigger question mark is around them, uh, which is why I would expect for would have expected Verstappen to be a little bit closer to Leclerc versus being closer to Piastri. Any of these long shots worth uh, a few <clears throat> bucks? Yeah, I think Hamilton and Russell continue to be interesting. Um, they did not live up to expectations in Azerbaijan and Singapore, uh, but they are continuing to build their car. Hamilton, obviously. So maybe I put a little bit more uh, emphasis on Russell than Hamilton over the next couple of weeks because Hamilton, as we talked about before, he's moving over to Ferrari next season. So I think the team consolidates around Russell these last six races. And then Carlos Sainz, for the exact same reasons I talked about Leclerc. I mean, he's in the same equipment uh, driving the Ferrari, so he's going to get the same upgrades. He is the one that is leaving Ferrari at the end of the year to make room for Lewis Hamilton, though. So, therefore, Charles Leclerc, of your Ferrari drivers, I would say, is the better bet of the two. But Carlos Sainz, probably from a podium standpoint, probably stands a pretty good shot. All right. And let's see. Sprint race... What do we got here? The sprint winner. What about these odds? Interesting. Yeah, so I like I kind of like Piastri at 550 cuz here you're getting you're getting the benefit. So so sprint race as I said before half points. So it's not as big of an issue. Um I think Norris definitely again deserves to be the favorite, but I think Piastri probably stands a better shot at uh uh, challenging Norris than maybe Verstappen does at this point. Um, so the odds, you know, if Verstappen were 550, I, I think that'd probably be the better value. But Piastri being in the same equipment as Lando Norris, um, sprint race not as important as Sunday's race with full points on hand. So you're getting five plus the odds on Norris. I might go with the Piastri there. Okay. And what's the difference? But what, what, is, what is the whole sprint thing about? Sprint race is just a way that Formula One introduced a couple of seasons ago to make Saturdays more interesting. <laughs> so they they have literally a sprint race. It's not long enough to have to stop for tires or anything. So it's just a, a short number of laps, like 20 or 30 laps or whatever it is. Uh, it pays out half points. You actually qualify for it on Friday afternoon. Then after the sprint race, uh, you get a medal instead of a trophy if you win it oh. or finish so That's that you nice. that going for you too Metal. um but then after after that um <laughs> saturday afternoon is when the qualifying for sunday's race happens so in my mind it kind of takes away the on track time to be able to prepare for sunday so teams consolidate have to consolidate all of their decision making basically into friday um and the sprint race kind of is what it is it's a, a shorter preview of what you're going to see on sunday okay and has it worked I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Again, I, I think, you know, I, I think you can make the, you can make Saturdays more interesting by giving teams more tires, more options to try out set up, you know, that puts cars out on track more frequently. Um, I, I think the Saturday shows with limited tires, um, you're not allowed to change engines. You're not allowed to change as much on the cars. So teams just didn't have as much to do on saturday um they basically figured things out did exactly what they needed to and then parked it um, i think with testing the way that it is now where testing is very limited throughout the year and throughout the off season um 
just give them more tires on Saturday. Let's not play around with trying to make it again. Charles, a stick and ball sport uh, to try to get more action artificially on track on Saturday. I like the focus being on the grand prize on, on Sunday's races. So um, they're a little bit boring. Uh, they, they definitely foreshadow what you're going to see on Sunday. So uh, the odds change dramatically, I would say. Um, if you get an unexpected result on Saturday, you know, like some surprise happens, like magically uh, Verstappen and, and Red Bull's upgrades are exactly what they needed and they come out and they dominate on Saturday. Uh, you know, Verstappen goes from a positive number to a negative number for Sunday for sure. Mm, okay. All righty. That's going to wrap it up. So what's coming up for F1? F1 is continuing its Western Hemisphere swings. So we've got uh, Texas, obviously, this weekend. After that, we go to Mexico, then Brazil before we come back to Las Vegas. And uh, for those of you who remember what I was talking about at the beginning, uh, Las Vegas is the one track out of these last six that is a street course that is not the uh, traditional natural terrain type of road course with uh, more slow corners which will suit um the cars that are not named red bull more so ferrari and mclaren i would say so mexico brazil then las vegas and then we head to the middle east to close out the season with qatar and abu dhabi all right and don't forget you could check out cj's fantasy report uh and it's going to be on uh on this video link in the description check it out over at rotowire.com we're going to preview every race, even when the NASCAR season is over, which is not, we haven't done this before, but you know, this is an F1 video now. Uh, so for F1 fans, we're going to continue all the way through to the championship this season or the championship, the, the final race uh, to decide the championship, which who knows if it's going to be in December or not. Uh, we'll see. But we'll keep updating everybody on the championship futures and see whether or not Lando Norris can make things interesting. Uh, but uh, we have recommended for the past month or so that Max Verstappen is an excellent, and still is, an excellent um, handicapping opportunity uh, at uh, just minus 165 right now to win the championship. So, uh, CJ, appreciate the time as always. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Enjoy the races this weekend.